Okay, so this is just a short instructional video showing you how to set up dot leaders in your InDesign document. Um, an example of where you might use these is right here. Typically, you'll see these in a contents page in a document. So we have our chapter title here, we have our page number here, and we have our dot leaders connecting it. Very often, what I see a lot of um, well, a lot of authors using Word, and also and even a lot of designers who don't really understand how to use these correctly. What they'll do is you'll just get a document where you'll just have somebody repeatedly tapping on the full stop or the period key, depending on where you live, um, to fill in the space, which is quite ugly. You'll get inconsistent spacing between characters. You won't get anything lining up correctly on the right, and it's just yeah, it's quite horrible. Um, this is the correct way of setting it up, that's all. So this is what we'll end up with, just a contents page with a list of chapters and a list of page numbers connected with a nice tidy little dot leader. Um, as you've probably already figured out, it's called a dot leader because the idea is it's a bunch of dots that lead your eye where it needs to go. So over here we have our chapter list and our page numbers. And what you need to do is you need to make sure you have a tab. That's literally all you need. It's just chapter name, tab, page number. Just do that for all of your chapters. We select them all here, and then we go into the horrible tabs panel. Everyone hates this thing, but this is one thing that it's actually very useful for. Okay, so what you need to do is, and just remember this ruler doesn't really give you a one-to-one -one relationship. It shows you the measurements as they relate to the frame that you're dealing with, but it doesn't line up. You can sit it over here or here or here or wherever you like. Um, yeah, you just need to insert a tab. So somewhere in your text, it doesn't matter where. It really doesn't matter where because you only have one tab. As long as it's far enough in that none of it's not encroaching on your chapter titles, that's all you need. So to create a dot leader, you literally just go to this frame here called leader and you put a dot in it. And that's that's really all there is to it. So rather than tapping repeatedly and entering a bunch of dots manually, which won't match up, this just lets the system insert them into a tab space for you automatically. Um, what you can do is also you can adjust where the numbers line up. So if you look at here, you've got you can have left justified tab, center justified tab, right justified tab, or aligned to the decimal, which isn't really valid here, so we won't worry about that one. So yeah, if you have it left justified, you will have all of your numbers left justified. So it doesn't really do anything to the rest of this. It's working off the tab. It's basically going, here's the tab marker. Everything after it will be left justified or center justified, if you want for some reason. The one that I typically use for setting these sorts of things up most of the time is right justified because, yeah, that gives you a nice clean edge down the side. The numbers that have multiple digits can expand out and it just, it looks tidy. But you may find that you'd prefer left justified. It depends on the situation. That also looks nice and tidy if you don't need it to be expanded over a very long range, over a very wide sort of frame, then that might be what you'd like instead. That's fine. The other reason I prefer to do the right justification though is because if you want to have your tab, your um, if you want to have your list aligned neatly to the left and to the right of the frame, you set a right justified tab on your list and then you just right justify the text because all that will happen is the tab will push your numbers as far to the right as they can go and will also correspondingly push your chapter titles as far to the left as they'll go. So even though the text is technically right justified, you'll get a nice tidy list. And yeah, it's really as simple as that. A um, couple of other things that you can look at just out of curiosity. You may have already figured it out, but you can put whatever you like in there. It doesn't have to be a dot. Traditionally, that's what you'd use. That's typically the best option because that's what you're trying to use it for. But if you want to abuse the technique, you can use it for all manner of other things. It'll just put whatever character you place in there and repeat it in the space to fill it. Simple as that. And so yeah, that's 
a very straightforward thing to know, but yeah, surprising number of people haven't actually done this before. So if you ever find yourself tapping repeatedly to try and fill dots in the space, yeah, this is the correct way of doing it. So that's all.